with the revival of a dev video. Comes a tutorial, split into three parts. Hey, what's up guys, Magic Firestorm, and uh, today we're gonna be discussing weapon experience, and uh, actually, in this episode, I might say weapon rank instead of experience, so pardon whenever I say that. Today we're gonna be needing some states, some variables, some switches, and two plugins, which one is required, and the other one is probably requ required, but there might be some other way. Which is auto passive states and action sequence plugins. Technically, I guess there are three plugins, but yeah, and fly. And basically, we're gonna discuss whenever someone wields a certain weapon, they'll be getting experience with that weapon. If they switch weapons, they'll obviously get experience with the other weapon, but yeah, I'll explain more when we get into the video. Anyways, yeah, let's get started. I think it's fair to discuss uh, every uh, every state and variable because actually there are no switches this the switches are mostly for the next tutorial which is on weapon ranks and I guess I should say that now the tutorial after that is gonna be for gaining weapon skills which is based on Togi Mura sessions sharp FE which its remix just came out by the way uh, here we have our states and variables very simple we have a check state which is, gonna, which is gonna check which character is using the skill it is mostly for basic attacks and such we're gonna be using this for the basic attack and a multi multi the skill that's usable by both Rimfire and Herald usually you want to use this for skills that again are used by multiple people then we have our variables we want a variable for each weapon for each character Rimfire in this case will sometimes be able to have the opportunity to have both swords and axes Herald in this case also will have swords and axes, but we don't want one variable that universally that's universally used for one specific weapon. Otherwise, they had the same weapon rank, which wouldn't make too much sense. We also have two states here: the sword state and the axe state. Which, when using auto passive states, we'll be able to attach to these weapons so that we know what weapon type they are. This is important. Uh, we should also analyze the skills. We should not analyze the skills. We'll analyze the states. Uh, but yeah, the sword state and the axe state aren't really too important, including the, the check weapon rank state. This is just so we can indicate that the weapon rank, the weapon is being checked. This isn't even the right tag. It's just check weapon. So we're gonna go over the skills next, because this is gonna be the interesting part. Let's go to basic attack right now, which is, in this case, I've been using for my all my tutorials, bash. Uh, we're gonna add this check state to, to everyone. Well, technically the user, but anyone who uses their basic attack will have this check state added to them, in this case, start two. Everything else that goes on isn't really important, you can just have it perform the action in, as normal. However, we're gonna add this common event straight on the end, common event 12. This is the same thing that occurs for slice single equipables. Actually, now that I think about it, it's probably more, makes more sense if we use the multi equipable one for bash because I think I only use that for examples using single uh, classes with only one equipable weapon. So I think I'm gonna just change it to 15, which is what we're gonna use. Uh, cut, chop, rune cut, and haircut do not need the check state in the beginning. This is because it is only used for checking who, who the user is, but since these are exclusive to each character, it's not going to be necessary. Also, another thing that, that can be done is using utilizing weapon weapon experience in your formulas in your damage formulas and also displaying your weapon experience it's a sword rank here it's just a placeholder name right now all right i guess this should be taking the consideration that cut chop rune cut and haircuts have different common events at the end i mean i, I suppose that's important yeah actually that's pretty important Anyways, we're gonna go straight to our common events, which is gonna be the bulk of this entire tutorial. It should be known that these top three are for classes with only one weapon. These bottom three are for classes with multiple weapons. It should also be taken into consideration. Yes, I say that a lot. Uh, for the first part of the tutorial, I'm gonna be using character classes with only one weapon, so Archsage and Herald. Afterwards, I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna display uh, classes with two couple weapons. Again, Archsage and Herald, but they have more than one weapon equipable. So we're gonna go back to common events. This first skill, technically this one too, actually this one, this one is just for multiple skills but for only one weapon is misleading. I'm not gonna change it right now, but uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna, so at this point you should have the check state applied to your user. 
because check state is, is applied way before the common events arrives. If room fire is affected by just go to this one. If room fire is affected by check weapon, in this example, room fire only uses swords because he'd only be with the with the arc sage class, but with only swords. His sword rank will go up at one, and if you want to use the gab window plugin, you definitely can to display. Not too important. If Harold is affected by check weapon, since he only uses axes, it'll increase his axe rank. And again, display. At the end of it, make sure to, to discard this checking state because it'll make things a lot more complicated if you don't do that. Uh, for the multiple skill, the only thing that changes here is that you also want to check what weapon they're using by using is room fire affected by the sword state or is room fire by us using the axe state. Otherwise, you'd have to do something like room fire is wielding the weapon, I don't know, like iron sword. You're gonna have to do that for every single weapon, so it's best to use the states for now. Or for this entire tutorial. And then, and then you would proceed to go on with the ranks such as Sword Axe for Runefire or Sword Axe for Herald. Of course, adjusting them so that it fits each character accordingly. And again, removing at the end. Very simple. Uh, these on these these ones under the basic attack and multi is pretty the basic attack slash skill that's usable by multiple people. They're basically just simplified versions. You don't have to do them, you can basically use the same thing, but for simple reasons. If Runefire is using their unique skill, and they only wield swords, they're gonna increase in sword rank. If Harold uses their, their unique skill, and they only use axes, they're gonna increase axe rank. If Runefire is using multiple weapons, if they're affected by the sword state, they'll get sword rank plus one. If they're affected by the axe state, axe rank plus one. Same thing with Harold. Alright, so we're gonna go into the tutorial straight away. Oh, it's a demonstration. Uh, these are the classes that only have one equipable, and also change battle equips here for demonstration purposes, but that's mostly for the multi equipables. Alright, where do you use Bash for each of them? Uh, these gap windows are poorly timed, but they say that we gained that specific rank, and according to what's up there in the description, it does increase our rank. Uh, just like Slice says here, explaining weapon experience, it's difficult when a skill involves multiple actors because it's kind of difficult when you're trying to find which whichever act. There's probably some way to do it, but it might be hard to find a way. I'm not sure. Anyways, Rudy's cut with Rune Fire, and Harold also has his axe rank at one. Uh, He's gonna use Slice. Now these should give us the same results, so they both should have two in their specific weapon. And Fire does. And Harold does. Alright, time for the second half of the tutorial, where we have classes with multiple weapon types. Runefire actually is able to equip swords and axes, and so is Harold actually. Right now they each have a sword and an axe equipped though. So, we can see our sword rank when we use Cut, because Cut is, exclu is exclusively used for swords. Rune Cut shows both of them, because it doesn't matter what weapon they use, it'll display, it'll increase the weapon rank of the weapon they're using. So we're gonna use Cut, and we're also gonna use Chop for our first demonstration. So they both get a sword and axe rank up. And you can see that it displays for both of them here. And it should display. Yep, it displays for Harold as well. Now we're going to change the equipment of both of them. We're going to change it so that Runefire has an axe. We're going to change it so that Harold has a sword. Now, if we, now you can see here that cut is unusable. Again, you can only use swords for this skill. If we use Rune Cut, it should give us axe rank. Haircut would give us sword rank for Harold. Well, I'm gonna show off Slice for this demonstration. So Runefire gets one Axe rank, and Harold gets one Sword rank. As you can see here, Rune, uh, Runefire has one Sword rank and one Axe rank. And Harold has one each as well. And that's basically it. This might be a short one, but this'll, this'll help lead into the next one, which is about weapon ranks. If you see my devlog, I think it was like 2018 or something. 
I talked about how I didn't want to make it seem like a tutorial, but technically it was a tutorial. I was just joking about it, but... Anyways, yeah. Next up is weapon ranks, which is gonna be important because we're gonna have a lot of switches and be essential to equipping certain weapons and also making it so that there are certain weapon restrictions. So we're gonna need equip requirements for that. Also after that is gonna be weapon gaining weapon skills, which is gaining skills based on your weapon experience, which I've tried using for one of my projects before, but it didn't really that project went nowhere. Anyways, yeah, if you like this video, please consider dual slashing that like button or sending a place to subscribe button. I apologize for the short video, but it's really complicated to explain. I wanted to get this, get this, I wanted to record this fast. Anyways, but anyways, see you guys and stay safe.